scoring your paper six to boost your final grade in your IGCSE exam. So this video, I am going to teach you, right? Give you some tips on how to score your IGCSE paper six. Okay, so first thing is about the, you have to clear your doubts on the decimal places and significant figures. I got a lot of questions from my own students as well, asking me whether they should be writing, oh, am I supposed to follow the decimal places of the data that I calculated, or am I supposed to follow the significant figures? And if I follow the decimal places, how many decimal places should I put for my final answer? Or how many significant figures should I put for my final answer? Right? So I want you to think it very simple, super duper simple, just like this. Whenever you are using apparatus to do your measurement, oops, I'm sorry, this is about paper six, right? I know that you are not going to use any of the apparatus, but hey, they, sh they would mention, the question itself would mention the apparatus that they use to do their measurement. For example, don't worry about that. I'll give you some examples after that. So for example, you're using a meter rule. Okay, they told you the question mentioned that a meter rule is being used to measure the length, the height, or something else. So your readings, if they mention the apparatus, so your readings must be recorded according to the decimal places of the sensitivity of the apparatus. I will give you one example. This is a passive question that I copy. Record the thermometer's reading. So what you are supposed to do is that step one, you have to identify the sensitivity of the thermometer. So what is sensitivity again? Sensitivity is just simply the smallest division on the thermometer. So you look at the smaller scale. So this is 10 scale, okay? Uh, so the smaller scale is one one degree Celsius. So you take your reading here, this is 20, 21, 22, and 23. So the reading is 23 degrees Celsius, just like that. Okay, the next one. Whenever you perform any calculation using your calculator like this, yeah, you use your calculator to do your calculation. You have to bear in mind that the final reading must follow the significant figures of the data that you use for calculations or the values that you use for your calculation. Example, a student make measurements and record readings from ammeter and voltmeter, calculate resistance. Oh, so these are the readings recorded yeah, from the ammeter and voltmeter. So first of all, how to calculate the resistance? Resistance is just simply VP over IP. So VP is 3.6 volt, IP is 0 0.81 volt. Ah, IP is 0 0.81 ampere, I'm very sorry. So this is ampere. So all you need to do is just to take 3.6 divide 0 0.81. And I got 4.444444, could you see that? So that is a lot of significant figures here. But don't worry, as long as I am using my calculator to do my calculation, I look at the significant figures of VP. VP has two significant figures. IP has two significant figures. That is why my R will take two significant figures, which is 4.40. Just like that. As simple as that. The next one is about the graph. So whenever you plot a graph, you make sure that the scales are large enough because the graph paper will be given. You don't want to plot a very small graph because that will be very inaccurate. And you have to make sure that you label both x-axis and y-axis. And again, most importantly, all the points have to be plotted correctly on your graph paper because they will have to check on that. So example, I have my table here and I do some necessary calculation here. The question asks you to plot a graph of P slash N, slash N, N is the unit of P, which is Newton. On the Y axis, they mentioned that against one over X slash one over CM, that is the unit of one over X on your X axis. So you have to start both axes at the origin. 
But that is not true for all cases because sometimes they will let you choose your own skill. But in this scenario, the skill it's not the skill. You have to start your graph from the origin. Zero, zero. So this is a graph paper given. So I have to start from origin. And I make sure that I use most of the space given on my graph. And then after that, I label my axis, Y axis and the X axis. After that, I make sure all the points are plotted correctly. And I draw my best fit one passing through origin. So if, and after that, they ask you to do some gradient calculation. And for gradient, we use mathematics to do. So this is the equation of gradient. So you need to have two coordinates, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And you need to draw a large triangle to show that as a proof that you use the graph to do your calculation for gradient. And you might want to ask, how big is the triangle? Because I did mention that the triangle must be as large as possible, right? So you look at your graph, you look at your straight line graph. This is what I meant by straight line graph. Let me highlight this. This is my straight line graph. You have to make sure that your triangle occupies at least half of the straight line graph, at least half. Uh, so it is this big, at least this big. You can draw as big as possible. You can utilize all the straight lines. So if you want to know more about the graph plotting, the, the important tips in the graph plotting, you could actually check out my one of my YouTube videos, right? Uh, and also subscribe to my YouTube channel. The next one, which is the last part, planning ex experiment. This is super duper important because they give you seven months for this. Oh, okay, the tips are make sure that you read every single word. No skip reading, please, because you might miss some important information. And follow the instruction. Just follow instruction closely and always draw labeled diagram. So there, is, there, there are a lot of benefits, a lot of advantages of drawing the labeled diagram. First is that you could plan your experiment in a more systematic way and then whenever you draw you can see the whole thing you can imagine the whole thing and then you can write your methods in a more appropriate way so i give you one example to discuss here this is one of the past your question a student has a box of converging lenses but does not know their focal lengths plan an experiment which will enable her to determine the accurate value for the focal length f of one of the lenses using the equation given here, where u is the distance between an object and the lens, and v is the distance between the lens and the focus image of the object. The apparatus available includes a lens holder, a 12 volt lamp with a holder, with a power supply, a card with a triangular hole converted with tracing paper, write a plan for the experiment. So once I read that, no skip reading, can you see that? So you should list any additional apparatus needed. Draw a diagram of how the apparatus will be arranged. Clearly label your U and your V. Write a method for carrying out the experiment, including how F would be determined and state the precautions which should be taken to obtain a clear and a focused image. State the precautions which should be taken to ensure that the measurements are accurate once a focus image has been obtained. So all these things here must be written down in order for you to obtain that seven marks. So step-by-step -step guidance here. But since they asked us to draw a labor diagram, I would want to draw my labor diagram first. So these are all the things that I drew here. And okay, I have to state clearly where my U is and where is my B. How do I do measurement for B as well? And after that, I labor everything here, but it seems like this is not a battery because they give me power supply. So I want you to change this to power supply because this is a 12 volt power supply. Remember, they did mention in the question. 
So this is my labor diagram. I labor out everything, the screen, the meter roll, because I have to use a meter roll to measure the U and the V. And after that, you have to follow instruction. So the instructions are, the first one is that you have to list the additional apparatus needed. So all I did was like, I write down the additional apparatus so that it's easier for examiner to search for my answer. So I stated the screen and the meter room. I need both of them. After that, write a method for carrying out the experiment, including how F would be determined. So methods, first of all, whenever I draw a diagram, I will want the examiner to refer to my diagram. So I say set up the apparatus as shown in my diagram. And after that, I measure the distance U. How do I measure? By using a meter rule. And after that, I have to move to the screen, back and forth, back and forth, until a sharp image is formed on the screen. And then I measure the V by using the same meter rule. And F can be calculated by using the equation V. And after that, in physics, we don't just con con conduct the experiment for once. We have to repeat the experiment for with different lengths. After that, state the precautions which should be taken to obtain a clear and a focused image. So these are my precautions. So I have to conduct the experiment in a dark room because I don't want any light sources to interfere with the light source from my lamp. And I have to make sure that the lamp, the cart, the lens, and the screen are aligned in a straight line because I want to see the image of the lamp yeah, on the screen. That is why I make sure that they are in a straight And state the precautions which should be taken to ensure that the measurements are accurate once a focused image has been obtained. So you have the image. How should you do to make sure that the measurements are accurate? That's the question. So precautions to obtain a, a accurate measurements is that I repeat the measurements of U and V and I find the average because random error could occur. So I random error is the error coming from any direction, everywhere. I don't know the main cause of the random error. I might have made some mistake in my measurement. So that is why repetitions is very important. And then I make sure that my eye position, my eye position is perpendicular to the scale on the meter rule. Why? Because I want to avoid parallax error. Parall parallax error is the error due to the eye position that is not parallel, that is not perpendicular to the scale on the meter rule. I might be tilting my head, I don't know. That is one of the cause of the random error. And I use a white screen so that I can obtain a clearer image on the screen. So lastly, if you really, really need the PDF solution, the full solutions for the past year papers that I discussed here, these are my solution. I didn't just copy from the mark scheme. These are the precautions like for this one. These are the precautions that I carefully selected. And I don't just give you two precautions. I give you more precautions so that you have more idea to write in your coming exams. So my solutions are something like this. If you need the PDF solution, all you need to do is just to subscribe to my YouTube channel, follow my TikTok channel, as well as my Instagram channel and you screenshot that as a proof and you just message me via my Instagram and I'll be sending you the PDF solution. Thank you very much for watching. Bye.